This is Time Rider at Chapter 4. What you're looking at here is the Route Master 5C. The Route Master was a matchbox staple going back to the 1950s. The earlier ones had a little bit different shape to the back of them, and the 5C and 5D were virtually identical, with the 5C having no seats and the 5D having seats. The 5C was produced from 1960 to 1965, and the 5D from 1965 to 1969, and the Routemaster bus never made it into the superfast world. It is, however, a matchbox staple. This is my Routemaster, and I purchased it with a lot of matchbox for $2.85. It originally had decals on the side that said players please which is a brand of cigarettes mine was a mess it was bent in just about every way that a matchbox can be bent and it actually sat for quite a long time even after I had the decals because uh, frankly it scared me a little bit I think that the test of anybody who does restorations is how well they can deal with something that's damaged like this one was. I've done a little bit of straightening here and there, but it's all been very minor. And to date, I've really only seen one other restoration done with something that was probably as badly damaged as this, maybe even a little bit worse. But I think the true test of how good you are at this, or how good you're going to be, is how well you can fix something like this. I mean, think about it. It's almost a 60-year-old model. Maybe, maybe it is a 60-year-old model. But I ordered the decals, and here we go. Let's see how well I do. Getting it apart was a simple enough proposition. It didn't have any posts. It was just held together with tabs. So it was just a matter of finding a good place to stick a screwdriver in to pry it apart uh, without damaging it any further. Once I got it apart and got to looking at it, uh, you can see there that the back step has a little bend to it. The entire front of the upper deck was pushed over to one side and there was a little bit of a bend in the overhang right next to the driver's compartment. The entire back of the chassis also had kind of a downward bend to it. It wasn't real bad, but it was bad enough. And because everything up top had been moved over, uh, the angle on the uh, right side of the model in the cantilevered portion of the upper cab was now straight. And if you look at the top of the uh, driver compartment, it's supposed to be angled on both sides. I had never worked with these gray wheels before and uh, I was kind of surprised they're not really the hard plastic that the uh, the black ones are they're almost more of a hard rubber but uh, I didn't want to damage them at all so rather than taking a Dremel because there wasn't a whole lot of uh, extra material on the axles uh, I decided to use the method of squeezing uh, the narrow burr uh, to get the tires off. There was so little extra material, it was really very hard to get any kind of purchase on this at all. I eventually did get them off, 
Uh, but I'm not going to belabor this video with me squeezing axles. Paint removal went about as expected. Uh, I went ahead and used my aircraft paint stripper. I will say this though, uh, after using stripper in the aerosol cans, I think uh, once I've run out of this, I'm going to go to the uh, the gel in the can. Uh, I think you just have better control and I always wind up smearing this around with a brush anyway. So uh, I don't know, I guess people can do what they want, but I've noticed more and more people are moving away from the aerosol cans and maybe if you're doing a large area uh, the aerosol cans might be nice, but I think for uh, this type of work um, you're probably better off just using a brush. And I do like this better than the citrus stripper, I will say that. Uh, this uh, aircraft paint remover. Sometimes I have to do it twice, but typically when I do have to do it twice, it uh, it's because it's a really tough paint to get off. And I may have even tried Citrus Stripper first and it didn't even put a dent in it. So I like this particular brand. Uh, it really does a great job. So the uh, aircraft stripper had turned the paint pretty much into goo and here I am with my uh, purple toothbrush that I got from Marty's wife. Not really. I actually keep three uh, three of these brushes uh, and they're different colors and that's by design really uh, because I don't like using the toothbrush that I use with the paint stripper uh, for cleaning interiors for example. So. Uh, I have a purple one that I use with the paint stripper, then I have a, a pink one, and I have an orange one uh, that I use for various things. Here I am, I'm digging around uh, looking for a large enough section of paint that I can do some color matching later. I know a lot of people do color matching on the, uh, on the model. And then I had watched a video by David Hyde where he was restoring a dinky toy and he took the toy and he put it into a sonic cleaner and the color changed so dramatically once it was clean so I you know I don't know that by paint matching on a, on a 50 or 60 year old model you're really getting an accurate representation of what color the paint was anyway and also sometimes I not might not paint it uh, for a couple of days so I don't want to have the paint sitting around on my desk uh, for for a couple of days it tends to separate and it seems like sometimes when I remix it it's darker than it was originally I don't know if that's true or not or if it's just in my head um, but either way uh, saving a little chip of paint off of a model like this at least it has the benefit of being a clean piece of paint uh, I think that all we're really doing here these are very very old we're just making a best guess and I think that's all we're doing here anyway. So I'm sure there are those who would say, gee, you probably should have taken some footage of you straightening this. Um, but unfortunately I didn't and part of the reason is, is that I was hunched over the model uh, wearing magnifying glasses. It kind of took a while I used uh, several different pliers and a hammer and basically all three of the front posts broke uh, almost immediately. Uh, it, it was tough and I got the back fairly straight and I thought that was going to break too. There was one point where uh, I was about ready to just say to hell with it and throw the whole thing in the bin. And uh, I decided to press onward. Uh, that center post literally broke off completely. Uh, I was able to find it and save it uh, using super glue and uh, baking soda. 
even at that, I didn't get it completely straight. Um, I think I got it about as straight as it's going to get. And uh, I'm not totally displeased with the result. Here I am trying to glue that center post back in. You know, and I was almost directly above, and my big old hands were still getting in the way, and I kept dropping it. And you can see all the pliers there. I used needle nose, I used regular pliers, I used a, a, a pointed snout pliers, whatever you want to call it. Um, it was it was pretty intense. Like I say, there was one point where I was just about ready to just throw the thing away and call it good. It was a real bugger to get this thing in, too. I finally did, though. After I let the thing dry for a, for a day, uh, I went in and uh, started removing the excess material. Uh, I used files, I used X-Acto knives, uh, I used pretty much all the tools that I had at my disposal to try to reshape these pillars uh, and get them to some point where I felt that they were, you know, usable and still trying to retain the little ridges above the windows and whatnot. You know, on the chassis I'm using a, a brass Dremel brush here. Trying to clean the grill out a little bit. Uh, it was painted silver on the original model and so I'll paint it silver again but I want to try to get the details to stand out. And so here I am I'm wet sanding that front a little bit uh, and just you know the roof in general there was like a a spine to the roof that uh, I figure I'm just gonna leave it because it was cast that way originally and you can kind of get a look at you know how well my straightening went in these pictures um, it's still got a little bit of a bend in the front right window that I just couldn't get out but all in all it wasn't too bad I'm using very fine sandpaper here. I think I'm I'm actually using like 1200 grit or something along that lines. There was a few little dimples in the front, partly from the pliers, partly from just being cast that way. I did use some modeling putty to try to fill those. Since this uh, model had no posts, I figured I'd better super glue a screw to the inside of the roof uh, so I had a place to grab onto it when I was painting it. Uh, so I did both this and the chassis. It's not something I usually do. Usually if there's a a post I'll grab onto it and you'll notice there's a couple of little uh, interior walls and I thought about grabbing on to those um, but then I thought now nah, you know you might be able to actually see those either through the wheel well or the window um, so I just decided to do this my super glue is almost empty here so I'm really having to squeeze it uh, to get it in there 
And uh, finally, we're ready for primer. I decided to use uh, Tamiya White for this. You know, eventually it's going to be painted red, and of course it's it's kind of a an orangey red, for lack of a better term. So I thought that the white primer might help that paint pop a little bit. You can see the remnants of my purple VW in there. I think color mixing is a real art. You know, some people are just savants at it. Uh, I'm not one of them. I think the red that uh, they used here was a, a what I would like to call a very happy red. I don't know if it's because it was a toy. Um, the Tamiya red is just, it's a little too cool. So I added a little bit of uh, X2 yellow. And I think I got pretty close to where I wanted to be with it. And now it's time to uh, lay some paint on. One of my subscribers said that I mix enough paint to do four vehicles, and since then I've been really conscious of it, and I find myself actually running out of paint on some of the models that I've been doing. I need to find a happy medium, I think. So I put kind of a tack layer on the body, and then I... Uh, went to work on the chassis. I think I've mentioned before, you know, doing pickup trucks or dump trucks, you have to kind of make sure you hit all the angles. Well, uh, one thing about doing buses is they have so many windows and when you're painting all those windows, you want to make sure that you get the, the top of the window and the bottom of the window Otherwise, you'll have a gray or a white stripe when you get to the finished product, and you don't want that either. So, I moved this around actually quite a bit while I was uh, shooting the red. I think I actually got pretty close to. Uh, where I wanted that red to be, too. Wanted to make sure to get the inside walls as much as I could. Not having any seats, um, you know, to me that meant that a lot of the interior walls were going to be visible through the windows. So I wanted to make sure that I got them all. As much of the inside as I could anyway.
The decals I purchased for this came from Black Square de decals in England. Uh, one thing I always like to do is, after I trim them, is take a piece of the trimming and put it in the water. I'm, I'm really just kind of curious to see how fast it comes off and how it comes off so that when I'm working with the actual decal I have a, a little bit of experience. So you know I throw a little water on the model which is pretty much what everybody does and uh, I'm actually not pressing very hard on this at all I'm just pulling on it ever so slightly uh, trying to get the decal off and there it comes and I lay it down and position it where I want it to be. Once I get it there, using a Q-tip, uh, I'll roll the Q-tip uh, across the, the decal uh, to get as much moisture out of it as I can. And once I get decals on both sides of the model, I give it a layer of clear coat to uh, protect the decal. Gave the top of the model another shot while I was at it to make sure it blended nicely. So this is probably the longest video I've ever done. Uh, there was a lot of uh, information to cover and uh, this is where we started. It was a very challenging restoration. There are some things about it that I was not happy with when it was done and uh, there are some things about it that uh, I thought turned out particularly well. But anyway, uh, here's the final reveal. I lost a lot of the detail in the grill, which uh, was really fairly upsetting to me. Uh, I had already applied the decals at that point, so I couldn't really go back and fix it. I guess maybe in the future I should do uh, the hand painting before I apply the decals. Uh, it's pretty straight, but it's not. It's still got a little bit of a cant uh, on the front there that I thought I had gotten rid of. It was a very challenging, challenging restoration. But anyway, it's the Routemaster 5C. And this is Time Rider at Chapter 4. And at the request of many of my subscribers, We'll leave the light on for you. Thanks for watching.